Uh, I think it's time to play Dungeons and Dragons. Actually, wait, no, fuck, <laughs> it's not. And that's the opening <laughs> to the show. Uh, oh. uh, because before anything, uh, hey, welcome back to Tales from Runeterra. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, we leveled up twice at the end of the King, uh, King, L- King Ladros, the Commander Ladros boss fight, and, um, we haven't discussed it since. So, at, uh, levels five and six, we got them at the same time, because milestone. We're gonna go down the line, and- <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, we're gonna go down the line, and we're gonna just basically say real fast, anything new, so, like, new health, new abilities, new traits, if you have, a, like, a class trait or like that, yada yada. Uh, but we're going to start in reverse this time, so let's go with Akram first. Oh, dude, that was, that was a bad time to go in reverse. I just opened up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, fuck it. We're I, gonna... fine. I, I, gotta, I gotta go. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh... <laughs> I was ready. Either way we went, I was automatically ready. All okay. right. For level six, primary thing was I got access to level three spells, and I learned four level three spells, which is pretty dope. So I got four? Call... Whoa, what? <laughs> I'm a cleric. I get the two spells for my deity thing. He's right. Oh, wow. I can only cast three <laughs> per long rest, so I can't even use all of them. But yeah, but I, I, I get to know four. So I have Call Storm, which is the same as Call Lightning. We changed it a little bit for this campaign. Uh, Daylight, Spirit Guardians, and Revivify. Revivify. Revivify, so... the most fucking Final Fantasy ass spell name ever, goddamn her. <laughs> yeah, like essentially when one of you die in a combat inevitably because it's going to happen uh, as long as I get to your body and have a third level spell slot I can make it so you don't die as I fucking what? twirl my DM mustache is the <laughs> idea that I can kill <laughs> characters and bring them back uh, let's see what else did I get I got some, some good health rolls got 53 health now uh, and I got a little bit more for my channel divinity so when I turn undead if they're really low CR undead, I can make them just to get destroyed. And the other one, I get to max out some thunder damage dice a couple times a day, which I might actually use. So that's cool. Right. And that's my level up in a nutshell. What's your new HP? 53. Uh, the coldest wizard in the land, Deltrum. <laughs> Uh, my HP is now 33 from 20 something, maybe 20, 26, like I believe. Eight, 26. Oh, that's not bad then. Seven. Well, maybe it is bad. <laughs> no, that's pretty bad. <laughs> uh, I'm at 33 HP now. I have level three spell slots as well. I have three level three spells, and my spell save DC, spell attack bonus went up, and I can now use an extra if i cast a spell i can use an ex- i can uh, expend an extra spell slot to sort of modify the spell augment it a little bit in a few different ways which i sincerely don't see myself doing like <laughs> except for once during a boss fight or something the one's insane ray of frost too <laughs> <laughs> we'll see all right y'all know let's get what you got more uh, guns uh ex- rogue is expertise so is that all you got? got I think six is only expertise for rogues. So I mean, I became much better at fucking stealing shit. I'll tell you right now. That's true. And uh investigating stuff, yeah. My investigation and in, uh steel went up. Do you don't get any, you don't get anything cool at five? Uh five you get evasion. Uh oh, okay. That's the that's and that's if you can see it, evasion. I have to half it. It's you can half. Yeah, it yeah, I know it's half. With, yeah, 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 yeah. With your reaction, and I have to. Yeah, I think I have to see it. It's right. Re- yeah. It's and then re- right. there's the one at seven, which is like dodge. Where if it's a deck saving throw and I r- pass it, I just take zero damage. Correct. Um, Ebrac. Oh wait, Yarno, new HP. Uh forty five. Oh, forty five. Wow, that's not bad. Huh? That's uh, really good. <laughs> Ebrac. Uh, so at level five, I gain fast movement, which is just increases my speed by 10 feet and I gain extra attack. So, um, I can basically, whenever, whenever I use the attack action, I attack twice. Um, and then at level six, uh, for my path of the berserker, I get mindless rage, which means I can't be charmed or frightened while raging. Or if I enter rage, I can suspend the effect of any charm or frighten until I'm out of rage. 
And that's pretty much all. New HP is 81. Jesus. <laughs> Got 20 con. Okay. Let, 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 me, let me just remember to only attack Ebrak with gigantic guns. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring it. I'll just yes. rage and get resistance yes. to piercing as a, damage. As I say, he's resistant to guns. Uh, this, let's see. This is in piercing damage. Soul damage. Take 72. Uh, well, eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> soul damage. You get, you get punched so hard your soul dies. Um, Basilio, what, what, what are you sitting at? Uh, I have 55 HP now. I About to get caught by the fucking rogue. Yeah. I know, that's why I was like, shit, 50, 45. We both are all the same thing, don't we? Aren't we both Actually, I believe you do, that's correct. Yeah, uh, and uh, I increased my strength to 18, and I get an extra attack, and that's it, because I'm a fighter, and I'm pretty boring. Well, Ebrak, when raging, can attack three times, and I believe you, <laughs> I, I believe you with clone can attack three times. Correct. Ooh. Well, here's only, when I'm, only when I'm frenzied. Frenzied, excuse me, you're times. correct, yes. Uh... Really? Oh, I did miss one thing. What's Apparently, that? if I hit someone with lightning damage, I can push them up to 10 feet if they're large or smaller. So you just have Thunder Wave on at all times. You, you have personal shotgun Thunder Wave. Yeah. Shotgun Thunder, Thunder Wave is a great name for a band. So, uh, we haven't done this in a couple of episodes. Uh, we're starting off with a reading from a time-worn journal. Hmm. Piltover and Zahn. The city of progress and the city of two halves. Shining brass and gold spires rise into the sun of Piltover, and darkened alleys of Zaun only find themselves made darker by the thick gray smog below in the sump. But the higher you climb, or lower you sink, the city's corruption grows either way. Does that mean the middle of the city is the least corrupt? The only thing still pure that runs along the river Pilt. Perhaps that explains it, why Yarno kept his shop there. Today, our gang of adventurers find themselves in the Entrasol, probably pronounced that wrong, level of the twin cities Piltover and Zaun. Just below the Piltover Promenade and just by the boundary markets that connect the two cities, Yarno, our Yordle sharpshooter, he calls this place home. Normally, normally the, uh, the sign, sometimes, you know, the Y and the T... It's like a neon light. Sometimes it's like a little bit flickering because it's not I, always on. I thought about genuinely saying that there is a big neon sign of Yarno giving like two thumbs up and a smile and it like blinks on and off. But I was like, that's a little too techie even for Zon. I, yeah. As soon as I see the name change, uh, I book it towards the store. Honestly, I'm like confused as hell. Okay, so uh, we're, we're, we're enter Yarno at least is entering he gets trinkets uh, is the or sorry, excuse me, Emil's Emporium. Uh, is the gang following this weird, strange man? <laughs> uh, I I pull Akram aside before he can enter. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Go ahead. Akram, this your first time off the island? Um, I mean, first time on a different island. Welcome to the ranks of being a world adventurer. <laughs> I've been on a boat before. No, no, no. But you, you've, you've never left. You've never left the Serpent Isles, correct? No, I have not. Smart I've ass. been on a boat before. <laughs> That's all. I pat him on the shoulder and walk inside. Oh, very wholesome! Wow, that was the, that was the best scene of the whole show so far. <laughs> I was just, I was just curious if this was Akram's first time leaving his home. As someone who spent a long time before ever leaving his home, I, I, I like checking on him. I guess it's true. I guess I am the only person that's leaving home for the first time. Yep, that's all of true. us are tra all of us are travelers in one way, shape, or form. Has anyone besides Yarno been to Piltover? I guess Deltrum is the only person that could could have possibly been. Hey, yeah. dude, I've been to Piltover, dude. Oh, I've been really? all over, fucking globe trotter, baby. I don't really spend a lot of time or like explore or anything. I, I go to, like one or two places. So did you like pass through Piltover on your way from uh, Freljord to Bilge? It's kind of a, in my head, I'm like, I'm looking for magic. Mm -hmm. Piltover is the tech place. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time here. So, right. yeah, one of those. Please point me in the direction of the pirates, please. Yeah, I mean, it, people would come here pretty often to to get port, like, get, get, you know, to get that way. Because fuck going through Noxus. Uh, first of all, I know 
a side entrance in the way I don't go in the front door because that's the way to get robbed in uh, Zon. It's just a known thing. I don't see. I see. You door. also read the Piltover and Zon glossary. Yeah. If you go in the front door, you're an idiot. So I'm gonna go in my like secret like Yarno entrance, which is like basically like a dog door, doggy door, like what? to the side, and <laughs> move some shit out like away, trash out of the way, and then I'm gonna yell for Scuzzle when I get in the store. If it's still there, I hope they didn't renovate the place. So Yegan's Trinkets isn't one of the largest stores in Piltover and Zon, uh, but it does make good use of its space. Uh, well-stocked shelves of trinkets, potions, maps, anything really Yarno has collected or pilfered over his various adventures of size and merit. All different. Um, <clears throat> several runs of just shelves loaded with items make up the front of the store, and then a counter in the back side of the store leading to a storehouse in back. There is a staircase up on the right side that is roped off, which leads to a sleeping quarters upstairs, mostly for Yarno, but also shared by Scuzzle, his wump uh, compatriot on occasion on occasion sorry i'm gonna and he in here is scuzzle uh a wump for those of you unfamiliar is a bipedal like basically gigantic mouse rat creature thing they're like they're they're kind of like yordles and they're often mis uh miscommunicated to be yordle yordles but they are not they are their own thing uh yes scuzzle is there you know uh, he's minding the desk would you like to just speak to scuzzle all right he's just chilling Scuzzle, the womp companion of Yarno, is sitting behind the counter of Yinkit's trinkets, uh, basically minding the tail and smoking from a long pipe. Just kind of, you know, minding his own business. Getting high. Okay, he's high as shit probably right now. Okay. <laughs> Scuzzle, just listen to me, okay? One second, Scuzzle. I, okay? What happened to the name? I left you in charge literally for like four days. Uh, at, at, the, at the sound of Yarno's shrill voice, uh, Scuzzle kind of jumps a little bit and like looks up like, what? Uh, you know, mildly red-eyed, and he looks at Yarno, sort of taking a minute to process that uh, Yarno is standing there. He goes, Hey, there's my favorite guy! <laughs> hey, Damn, that's a voice. Hey, you get into you, you get into my puff cap stash again. That shit ain't good for you, boss. I ain't done nothing to the sign. What are you talking about? Okay. Scuzzle. Hey, you ever notice how I, how I start every episode with a fucking voice I'm gonna regret? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, this one is not sounding good for your throat. Unblaze yourself. I have two rules usually for Yinkit's trinkets. One, the trinket doesn't sell. It's the story that sells. Okay, that's number one. Number two is you don't fucking change the name when I'm gone for a little bit because, like, well, no one's going to find it. What? Go, like, have you seen anybody? And I list off the name. It's Umil, right? Emil. Yeah, A M I L. Emil. Emil. There's an Emil name here. On the board, like, have you seen a character like that? Has he just been in the store? What's going? Like, please. Um, everyone, make a make a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> uh, wait, are are we all in the shop at this point? No, four of you are outside. Yarno is inside. Okay. So, uh, Basilio, what did you get? Uh, uh twelve. Ibrac. Four. Four. Oh. Uh, Yarno. <laughs> Nineteen. Okay. Deltrum. Akram. What did you get? Twenty-four. All right, so everyone that isn't named Yarno and Ebrex, so just, I guess, I guess, yeah, Bass, uh, Deltrum, and Akram, uh, before you, you see the sign change. You see basically like a rippling magical effect, and you see the sign morph back into saying, Yingit's Trinkets, the finest wares in Zon and beyond. Ebrex, you're still looking at a fucking sign that says a Meals Emporium. <laughs> Inside the store, uh, so uh, the last thing you said to uh, Scuzzle was something to the tune of, uh, "Do I do, do you know like did anyone like named a meal or anything come around here?" Uh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Behind Scuzzle, it sort of there's a doorway leading to the store the storeroom in the back, and it's, it's, it's the real goods we call it. The real there's goods. like a front door, and then there's like the the, the good goods. You never put the, the good stuff out in front. Um, and you see walking by the open sort of like entranceway of that of that door frame. You see the Gaunt Man for a second, and he just walks right by. Young Gaunt Man or old Gaunt Man? Old with the cane. He's in there. I'm going to dash past Scuzzle and go past and see if I can get so outside of him. So you sprint and you hop over the uh, like counter, basically, of you get strength. Or you slide underneath it. I'm going to say you can either do Yeah, I slide under the counter, dude. Uh, and you, sl you swing back into the storeroom, and there's no door in and out of the storeroom. There's just that entranceway, and there's no one back there. There's not like It's not like wrecked or strata or anything no everything's totally normal but there is something you don't recognize sitting on a table that you usually use to appraise goods and such is a brown leather journal i'm grabbing that what's going on with this it's empty there is one thing on the very first page 
there's an inscription. Uh, it's written in actual, uh, like proper Runeterran lettering, which is that Noxian okay. font. If you've ever seen that, um, I might put some on the screen now for the kids at home. Might not. Um, uh, but you, you can read it. Most people can. It's a very commonly used, uh, like written form of language. Uh, and it says, uh, "To my friend Yarno, signed Emil." Oh, oh my God! I I I would I would take this to somebody who knows magic better than me. So I probably. Eventually, in my head, I'm going to take it to Akram when I get a chance. As you basically dash into the back room, Scuzzle kind of like follows and he goes, uh, hey boss, you okay there? Scuzzle, here's what we're going to do. New wares. I th- I t- like I hand him the padlock and I also hand him the gears. <laughs> oh, he, oh, he brought me a lock. You know, you know how we love locks. Love locks. We love locks. I'm going to break into some other place and get more locks. OK, don't get too excited. OK. I've seen you excited. We can't have you excited because then you everything just goes crazy. So remain calm. Uh, in fact, you just pretend like you didn't see me for a little bit. Oh, you're breaking in somewhere. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah, this lockdown's a real pain in the old yanking if you catch my meaning. Because all <laughs> no, he I thinks is somebody mean. busted into the vault. Specify lockdown. I haven't even heard of this. Wait, you serious? You knew I left the Bilgewater Wait, and I yeah. came back. How'd you even? How'd you even get back into the cities? All right, well, let's not underestimate my talents here. Uh, second of all, <laughs> lockdown. Let's let's clarify what lockdown means. Somebody Focus. Somebody broke into the vaults again. They locked the whole city down. Is there a news article on this? The Pilt, the, the Pilt River Times read about this? <laughs> um, I, I'm going to say it's ongoing, so no. I let the gang in because I want to show off my store still. And just right. in case I want to buy anything. I mean, these are potential <laughs> customers, so let's be real. I know Basilio definitely needs some upgrades because man, that guy is tacky as shit. We'll get him some. We'll get him some thicken. Uh, Does so it? Yarno opens the door and uh, Skulls goes, "Hey, look, you brought customers. Come on in. Come on in, Yarno. What'd you bring us, buddy?" Uh, does it? Does it like smell at all in this place? <laughs> uh, Scuzzle smells, but the rest of the store doesn't. <laughs> okay, yeah. Basilio gives like Scuzzle a look up and down and is like, "I don't know what I expected, but yeah, it's pretty much this. This makes sense." <laughs> All right, I don't. You can peruse the store, look around. Scuffle can help you with any inquiries on what you guys might need. There's some interesting stuff. Uh, I can tell you might where I got it. I might, you know, have to uh, make up a couple stories on uh, elaborate a little bit on where I got it. Uh, but just take a look if you need to. But you can, we can stay here. But there's apparently a lockdown in the city. Uh, the vault's already been broken into. Uh, yeah, uh, some some of the sump heads think it was uh, Sheriff Caitlin because she uh she up and vanished, you see. But I think someone probably just flipped some a fancy alarm by accident. That's why we don't use any of them fancy hex tech security gizmos. Yano and I love a good old fashioned lock. This guy, <laughs> any points to Yano? This guy loves locks. You love locks. Look, you're <laughs> saying that little Miss Prissy uh up and is gone. That's great. That's great news. Yeah, nobody She's always on my ass. Nobody's seen it. All the wardens are in the tizzy trying hmm. to find her. Mm, that's a damn shame. Damn shame. Uh, okay. You think Caitlyn might have broke into the vault? Wouldn't she? Nah, that go again? I don't. I don't think that. Some of the chem punks talking about that. Mm. Okay, but either way, somebody broke into the vault, which is uh somebody's still in the vault. Let's just go to the vault because we gotta go. These people are look. Zons are slick. Okay, let's just get there quick. Well, how you, how you gonna get up there? The all the. All the hex veyers are being locked down by the wardens. You can't get up into the upper city. Sorry, sorry, all the what? Hex veyer, a hexdraulic conveyor. They're basically gigantic um, elevators that take you up and down through Zaun. Uh, uh, there's public ones which are gigantic, and there's private ones which are private. There is, there is a warden who owes me a favor or two because I definitely <laughs> got him some goods that he needed at the time under the table. He's a little shady. We'll just talk like that. Oh, right. Speaking of favors, uh, it's around here somewhere. And he scrounges around the, the thing looking for something and then uh, kind of puts his hands in it and goes, OK, maybe I can't find it. Uh, you had a letter here from uh, what's that professor, you know, up at the uh, the college there, the university. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, ma- hey, Madonga. Yeah, he's, still, he's, still, he's a good man. I hate this. Yeah, uh, he <laughs> said something about uh, he, he needed your presence and uh, an update on the rifle you had uh, borrowed. Yeah, yeah, bard is a great word, you know, <laughs> could be used in many ways and no one knows what you mean. Uh, okay, okay, 
we need to get upside. And well, I do know. I mean, I know about a couple of uh, private veyas you could use. You're gonna you're gonna put those down on a list. If I hand you a piece of paper and put where those are. Yeah, let's, let's double back to the person that's still locked in the vault. What's up with that? <laughs> somebody was trying. Somebody was trying to to rob the vault. They think, and they got locked in due to the security. Look. I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Nobody's ever broken into the vault. Okay, well, no, that's not true. Jinx blew a hole in the vault once, but she didn't steal anything. She just blew the place up. Uh, nobody's ever, you know, gotten in and out of the ecliptic vaults. That's the whole point. You can't get in. You can't get out. Uh, the, the, the vaults. But yeah, they think someone's inside. They got the whole city on lockdown. It's crazy. No one gets into the vault unless it was me. Okay, first of all, I'm going to make sure <laughs> we find out <laughs> and who Scott, is in that vault right uh, now. Can you, can you roll me a persuasion check? Uh, I got an 18. Scott goes, wait, boss, you've been in the vaults? Scott goes, <laughs> I pat him on the back or whatever. Since I can't reach his back, I pat him like on the lower back. Like, keep the store under under wraps, okay? Just give me the give me the sources that I ask for. Is is there anything that uh, I would outright see as like something I would want to pick up or is all just kind of like trashy trinkets to Basilio? <laughs> So I'm going to say that all the items in Yinkit's trinkets aren't anything of explicit, like, you look at it and instantly recognize <laughs> its use or value, but there are, like, there's golden items, there's maps, there's old, like, uh, relic-looking books and stuff like that. Um, and I'm going to sort of say that basically anything in this store that you might want from Mr. Yinkit over here, uh, he's going to have to explain why you might want it. Uh, I, I mean... Uh... I don't know. It, it, is there something you want to sell to me right now? You listen, uh, listen. As somebody who loves talking about my flaws, I would love to hear what you think I should have from your store. Okay. <laughs> oh, this kicks ass. Do you have a music box? Uh, no. But why would I need a music box? Okay. Pump up the when jams. You, you when you when you move the people of your region. I've seen and met very few of them. Okay. They uh, are very uh, extravagant with their movements. You are too, in your own way. But without the seance of music, okay, it looks very rigid, stiff. It doesn't flow. If I give you a magic music box, you can play music and it, the movements match the music. Will this you give me advantage rigid. on capoeira rolls? <laughs> Yes, it will give you advantage. Oh, yeah. It'll give you advantage on performance rolls. Okay, <laughs> using capoeira, assuming you you got you got to get you got to get it to the beat, and mm -hmm. it'll give you advantage on something else. I won't tell you about. Silly. I mean, I'm I, very interested. Yeah, I have noticed that the way to your heart is more flesh and woman like than most of our other party members. <laughs> <laughs> this can help. All right, listen. How, how much you want for this? <laughs> well, you're a good pal of mine, and how much you got? I don't know what you're worth. Hmm, listen, uh, <laughs> because we didn't actually get paid due to, you know, pirate land literally dying, um, I've got 50 gold. That's a lot. 50 gold is literally Scuzzle's wagers for like nine months. That's kind of rude. Is this, so, is this true? Scuzzle looks up. Hey, it's true. Business is business. Okay. What? But I get all but I get all but I get all the puff caps I can eat. And he takes a fistful of shrooms and just eats them. 50 gold is a lot, by the way. Uh, is uh, it really? Yeah, no, not 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 in this. Okay, maybe not in 50 this. Gold's a, in 50, 50 gold's a fine amount. 25 and then We'll be uh, we'll be in touch. Twenty five is fucking perfect. done. Fucking done. Right. Scuzzle looks up once again. That's why he's the best. Basilio, you received an antique music box. Uh, it plays an Ionian an Ionian tune that is familiar to Ebrek, and that's about all I got for you. Radical. <laughs> okay, great. It's a it's, a it's a it's a jaunty little tune. Let's leave this fucking place. <laughs> and Scuzzle slaps down the pencil. Goes okay. I got the list. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Let's see. And let's see. So, assuming you could get up to the upper city, uh, there's a there's one over in the seam you could use to get up. But uh, hmm, uh, it's that one's run by some evos, or maybe maybe it was just some campugs. You know, it's hard to remember who has what hole in the rock anymore. 
And then, uh, can- let's see, you can always, uh, you can always go south. I, one of the, one of the chem barons down at the sump has to, you know, be willing to sl- slide you in for a little bit of coin. Or, I mean, you can always talk to Victor and the, the Glorious Evos. They'll, oh, they'll help, they'll happily get you up there. Basilio can- says, is this big yordle even speaking English? I don't. Hey, uh, hey, what is hey, English? Hey, <laughs> first, fucking right. first of all, yeah, what the priest said. And second of all, I ain't, I ain't no, I ain't a yodel. I'm a wump. And he snaps his suspenders. Basilio mm. says, the more you know. <laughs> but say learned okay. not to be racist that day. <laughs> I think, is there, is there, would, would Yarno know a, a warden that could get him in? Uh, I'm going to say that, like, you you probably would, but there's no way of knowing where that warden is. Okay. And there's a lot of, like, conveyors. So assuming they are at a conveyor, you'd have to hope you get the right one. Uh, I, this is, I, I'm not going to read all this and hit Skuzzle's voice because it's, it's going to be hard to understand. Basically, here are the options for how Yarno would know to get to the upper city. Okay. You could go find a chem baron. Chem barons are sort of like leaders of gangs in, in Zaun. Most of them have access to one, if not multiple, private uh, conver- yeah, uh, hex bears. Okay. Uh, Victor and his glorious evolution, I don't want to say cultists, religious enthusiasts, uh, they oh actually God. have a bunch of private uh, bears that are pretty much like free to use, but you have to also you know, deal with their bullshit and probably give them <laughs> a, a charitable donation to their religious efforts. Um, mm. And uh, the last one is a one, one that uh, in a place called The Seam, which is a part, which is basically where the two points of the, Pil- the Pilgrims on Gorge meet. So, like, the deepest V. And, like, carved into the rock there, he says there is one at a bar called the Bright Brackern. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to bring up the journal while we talk about this to my magic friends, if they want to hear it. Maybe Delchum overhears me bringing up the Akram that I found a journal. And I would like him to check it out. Well, I want to hear you do it in character, though. <laughs> <laughs> there was, when I first got here, there was a name. I'm sure most of you saw it. Yarno's Trinkets is Yarno's Trinkets. Okay, I don't know what that name was, but Gauntman was in the back of my area, and I've been seeing him recently, and it's been haunting me. I dropped off this, and I hold up the journal, and I think it might have hidden text in there or might be bound with some kind of spells, magic, or something like that. I can't read all of it, but I think there's more than meets the eye here. I would like one of you fine gentlemen to check this out when you uh, say it might be magic uh lay it over there counter's like, fine uh, I put on like, what is, like what is deltrum gonna cast ray of frost at this book <laughs> no i'm gonna ritual cast detect magic on the book okay <laughs> yeah you guys every everyone everyone talks for a minute <laughs> scuzzle offers everyone some of his what? uh his his uh chem <laughs> like like snuff basically don't do that stuff uh First of all, <laughs> it's bad for the noggin. Uh, I can make suggestions based off what I know. I mean, I, I probably can assume things. I'm not going to make you go into detail about them. I just assume that uh, I don't know if I should do this all in character voice because it'd be a long time. But Victor's people are probably, you know, pretty dangerous if they lure you in. And some of our people, I, I, I don't want to insult them, but I'd be like, hey, these guys are very fanatical about their, you know, their beliefs and stuff. They can rope you in. It's it's not it's their waste time and stuff. So you're I prefer to go you're to saying, you, you're saying you don't think Basilio wants a robot arm. No. <laughs> <laughs> Capoeira. <laughs> E-Brac. I, mean, I think he, E-Brac, he might, I think E-Brac uh, might be gobble enough to join them. And uh, it's not great. I think, what? I think, I think offense to Robo that. Robo shark. Robo <laughs> shark. <laughs> that would actually I, be really rad. I think offense to that. Uh, the, 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 uh, Gang leader or whatnot, or the chem punk, or the gang chem baron. Yeah, they're just honestly. Once you do one thing for them, you'll owe them for the rest of your life. So again, not a great option. You did just get twenty five gold. I mean, that could be that could be huge. <laughs> twenty five gold to a chem baron might be like a piece of you know gum. Essentially, it's not worth much to them. These guys <laughs> own the city, and uh, I'd I'd probably suggest the CD bar and a. I, I'm not going to say we all vote for the CD bar, but that's my thought, at least, as a character. I don't know this place. I trust you. Yeah, I think we have to go with his uh, 
expertise judgment. on this one. Yeah, this ain't sure. my home, I, so I'll let someone else call this shot. So uh, I'm gonna say a minute has passed, and uh, Akram has completed ritual casting this, and, be, and because five e is stupid. Uh, actually, honestly, I don't even hate this rule. Uh, but they changed uh, detect magic so that like there's no like assigned colors to magic schools and crap like that. Correct. Uh, which I like and dislike. Um. But uh, so basically, you detect that uh, illusory magic has been cast on this journal. Um, I mean, maybe illusory is not the right term, but I'm going to say that it is. Um, and the contents of this book have recently been magically erased. What is so? Uh, I'll give hand the book back to Yarno. Contents got erased magically. Maybe with less <laughs> sarcasm than that. Can you magically get them back? Doubt it. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, all right. All right. Let, me, I, I, let me cast I, this spell magic. Bit. I, I talked to the, the the what I call my my boat boys. Well, no, so hold the on. Guy... If Deltrum's gonna Wait. cast dispel magic, let him cast dispel magic. All right. uh, I got a <laughs> dirty twenty. Ooh, baby. Okay. Okay. I I did I did not expect to have to read this block of text. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> We win. We, we we beat Zon. Here we go. So you've solved my Zon puzzle. Okay. Um, <laughs> D- uh, Deltrum holds out his uh, magical uh, caster's ring and basically projects a, a spell to dispel magic at the book that Akram had just basically swept over to see if it had magic. It did. Um, and <laughs> uh, actually, and Deltrum, you can tell that the book, or at least the spell with, with control of the book, is actively trying to fight and resist the spell you're casting on it. Dispel magic, um, but okay. you're you can also tell it ain't winning, um, and so uh, after basically a couple of seconds of holding your ring out and like basically feeling it and, like pushing back, like no, you you get dispelled now, young man. Um, you f- you feel that whatever magic was present in this book is no longer. Excellent. I open it up and actually I don't even look at it. I hand it back to Yarno. Okay. Uh, so you're, you're fl- you flip it through it, and you notice that the pages didn't come back, at least not fully. A lot of them, it looks like, have been written in, and then part of the magic has been pushed away, almost as if the part of, parts of it were being erased as it was being dispelled, if that makes any sense. Like, yeah. you see, like, basically, like, eraser marks, and, like, things were being, like, as if all at once everything in this pa- book was trying to be unwritten or erased or anything of that matter. So when you flip through, some pages are more complete than others, and some are just fully complete. Um, uh, you also see on a couple of pages there are uh, drawings, uh, some schematics even, blueprints. And uh, you see on one page uh, basically a symbol of two circles, uh, some gears, and some other uh, sort of like scientific markings. And Yarno, you recognize the handwriting on that page because it's yours. In my jur- is it my journal though? Uh, most of the other pages don't look like your handwriting. Yeah, I'm gonna try to copy down as much as I can. It's tr- is it actively still deleting or no? No, is no, 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 no. It's 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 all stopped. What's it? What's it say? Any like invention stuff or like? So what? um, uh, on on the page with the uh, gears, the two circles, and the uh, like shorthand, you notice uh, some of your own shorthand. Uh, you see like you've written like uh, test number, and then like that part's erased out. <clears throat> and um, you you see like a uh, t- uh, turn two and a half quarter. It's basically like notes of like due process, like things you were trying, you were attempting, it, like it, if in your tinkering days, Yarno, when you when you like you, you try something, you write down exactly what you did to like you know not duplicate or whatever the hell. And this looks like notes you were taking while you were attempting something with two circles and some gears. Uh, can I try to roll to remember it, like what I was thinking about? Sure. Give me a general int check. Seven, you yeah. those gears look kind of familiar. Damn. Yikes! Yeah. Well, All I'm right. glad I'm glad Deltrum burnt a fucking spell slot so you could forget what you drew. I mean, you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> fuck Basilio, dude. I think I gotta like him less than Yarno, man. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna say Yarno. Uh, at any at any point, you have some downtime. You can uh, examine that book a little further. Okay. Okay. Uh, either way, we gotta get to this vault. We have no, not much time to yeah. lose. I Did pull you back and Basilio aside in the meantime. I was like, okay, people in Zon. Piltover are uh, how can I put this? Uh, they're a little bit uh antsy. Antsy might be the best word. Uh, they might try to swipe your stuff or get a little squabbles or something like that. Just keep your wits about you. You guys are very physically imposing, so I don't want you to uh, thank you. <laughs> um, also, your honor, you had mentioned to Scuzzle you wanted to give him some items. Did you do that? 
I dropped off the padlock and the gears, the TF gears. I'm also going to ask him. Fuck, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna quickly reply to Cecil Heimerdinger's note, and I don't know if there's like a, a like how you mail in the city, in all honesty. But uh, so uh, you give that note to Scuzzle to basically take care of, and he goes, "You got it, boss." Uh, and he basically, you know, goes off to like, get some like paid or something to send the the uh, note up to the service. Um, there's like those like those like uh, postal service yeah. air tubes, maybe I don't know. Specifically, if you want me to, yeah, if you want me to put away, where I was like, see, so I'm taking care of some business in the city real quick. Uh, I've got some questions that you might be able to help me out with some scientific. Uh, I think I want your input on this. You might have a good, uh, better input on it than I do. This is your area of expertise. I will visit when I can. Signed, and then I scratch Yarnals. So, uh, so the gang leaves uh, Yinkit's trinkets, um, and as you guys turn to leave, uh, everyone, including Yarno and Ibrak, uh, can now see that the sign no longer says Emil's Emporium; it just says Yinkit's trinkets, baby. I think it's supposed to. <laughs> what a beautiful store! So, uh, Yarno leads the uh, gang over to the. Uh, bar that is deep in the seam which is the sort of like once again the cut where the po- points of the gorge meet and uh he leads you to a gorge <clears throat> a gorge cut bar called the bright brackern um but the inside is uh anything but actually you know bright a green lit tavern full of a few chem punks quietly chatting and a twitching looking barkeep who's polishing a glass that's that's where you are uh it looks cool i'll just kind of like s kind of like gesture towards the party like hey let's Let's go get a drink or something like that. Let's talk to the barkeep. Usually, barkeeps, you know, uh, kind of like gesture towards the bar front bar area. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming I'm assuming all the drinks are like this, like bright neon green kind of looking shit. Uh, there might be other stuff you'd have to ask to know. Okay, I was just gonna say like, are, are, like I was gonna like nudge nudge yeah. Yarn and be like, are these drinks safe? So the 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 three chem punks at the bar uh, are drinking that. Yes, that bright green fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles ooze. <laughs> TM, TM, TM. Secret of the ooze. Do they, uh, like, have I been in here? Might, maybe I know the barkeep. I don't know. You, you've Good. you've been in here before, like, once or twice. You wouldn't say you know the bartender. And, well none, and none of these chem punks look familiar. <laughs> I'm going to walk up to the barkeep and, uh, you know, strike up a conversation like, hey, uh, yo, uh, barkeep, uh, barkeep. What are you buying, um, stranger? <laughs> Thanks, Zach. I don't know. What are you selling? What are you selling? What are you buying? <laughs> I would like a drink for me and all my friends right here. Uh, I don't know what they exactly want. I don't know what you are offering, but uh, I'd like a drink for me and my friends right here. If you wouldn't mind, what would it run me? And then in a, in, a, in totally the voice I just used in a different one, he goes, yeah, sure. What would you like for for highlights? And he, ho- and he holds up the cocktail shaker in his hand, which has a sort of a glass port on the side so you can see how bright the inside con- concoction is and he sort of like shakes it kind of offering four of whatever's in that their, their cocktail shaker actually five brights please if you wouldn't mind and um i i flip him a, an extra gold coin for like a kind of like a gesture of like hey keep the change all right lose 11 gold fine I got drinks here expensive what the fuck yeah what the hell? um uh, so he finishes making the drink he's making for one of those chem punks who uh <clears throat> takes it and kind of like gives a side eye to the party that just entered and be, you know then t- goes back to his drink no no real thing there um <clears throat> and then uh the bartender makes up five more drinks pouring them into basically those small fluted glasses uh and just like lines them up on the bar and fills them all up across the uh top dude he doesn't do any bartender flair but you can tell he's like he's got it down he's got his rhythm down um He's he's not being too fancy. He doesn't want to dirty his uh his his nice white wrinkly shirt there. Um, and uh, sort of uh as he slides the drinks over with like the the back of his arm to you guys, he uh just looks at Yarno and he goes, "You looking for anything else?" Yes, yes. Kind of like give like a glance that we kind of understand each other here. Um, I've heard that uh there's some news with upper side of the city. And it's more or less on a lockdown. I was wondering if um, there is any way uh, potentially past that that you are aware of. Oh, well, you'd need a uh, private hex veyer to get up that way. You know where I could acquire one? I mean, strictly speaking, hex veyers aren't legal around this part of the uh, entresol. But I slide, them, I slide them two more gold coins. I was like, hey, uh, I know they're not legal, but, you know. 
gotta do what you gotta do. He takes both the coins and he like slides them over and goes, I might know where one is. But strictly speaking, it's not uh, accessible to most folk. Well, we aren't like most folk, as you can tell by some of our demeanors and... Uh... I ruffle my frail Yordian furs. <laughs> yeah, so so he, could, he he sort of looks over the frankly motley crew of uh people that you have here which is you know a uh, large shark vestia a, a <laughs> someone in, pri- in in priestly garb a Froyordian man an ishtali who are not actually very common in piltover and zon and a yordle is a it's quite the uh, quite the odd group he has here so he kind of gives you a look and he goes did somebody send you uh, we might be doing a little bit of an investigation ourselves but um well then that'll be 46 more coins Dog game. I'm like, listen, I I already gave you 25. I, I I got nothing else. Can we do like a quick uh what do you call those little meetings? Not a pep talk. Powwow. Can we do a quick little powwow? Can I like can I nudge Yarno and then also nudge I don't know, somebody else, else and like kind of <laughs> crane my head, just like, hey, turn around real quick. Um and sort of as as you guys are sort of going to move, um the barkeep, who after after mentioning forty six coins, looks at the rest of his patrons. There's four of them, um, and sort of like nods for them to uh, vamanos, and uh, they all leave, leaving just oh, you sure. and the barkeep in the bar. Oh, okay, we don't need a powwow anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna be yelling. Hey, somebody intimidate this fuck, you know. Um, I did. I do that. I did almost tell Ebrak to like smile menacingly with his big shark teeth at this guy. I do definitely want Ebrak to intimidate this fool. <laughs> May I call you Barkeep? I don't know your actual name. I'm sorry. Apologies. Uh, Phidias O. Godwin. <laughs> right, Phidias. Uh, let's just say that if we don't get to this vault, it could be trouble beyond just Piltover in your shop. It could be more uh, destruction of larger areas. You know, it, it wouldn't be safe. We need to get there. You have to believe me. I mean, all right, give me a persuasion check. Uh, that was a dirty 20. All right. Um, he, so Phineas, I guess I named the bartender Phineas. Uh, the bartender um, kind of looks at you with like an odd look. Uh, it's not common in Piltover and Zon for someone to really appeal to someone else's, uh, I guess, human sensibilities. Uh, and like, you know, some that actually care. Usually people are just like, whatever, dog. Um... But uh, he he seems kind of kind of struck him by what you said, as if he's actually taking you seriously. Which you know, everyone's in, trying to get something in Zion, Everyone's trying to swindle somebody else. So it's he's kind of like taken aback by it. And he goes, oh, twenty five coins. Okay, twenty five <laughs> coins it is. Just just use it for renovating your shop, and just we'll call it a day. Oh well, thank you. Look- and uh, he gestures over to <laughs> a line of what are basically bookcases that have been repurposed. And they're all uh, holding various like shining and like chain like not changing colors, but like brightly shining vials of potions, goo and the like. And he points to the middle bookshelf and goes something off about that bookshelf there. Oh, uh, don't worry. Uh, we have an expert um, craftsman in our group. We'll go check it out. Make sure it's not broken or anything. Don't worry. <laughs> I take the drink, slug it, put it over and kind of like slide it back to him and give him a nod. Make a it's not like an angry, uh, like, it was like, uh, I, I finished my drink. It was, it was roll, yeah. roll a d20 for me. It's a three. Uh, is, everyone, is everyone else taking their drink? I, I was going to wait until Yarno drank it. Yarno seems fine. Okay, then I'll drink I'll, I'll, I'll drink. I'll, I'll, I'll drink it. I'm not going to. I'm from Bilgewater. Like, Mine's probably gone already. I'm not going to up yeah, it. I did not drink mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not um, going to up it. Mine, but I'll, I'll, I'll sip it. I mean, it doesn't taste bad. It it, it definitely tastes thicker than a, a alcoholic beverage you used to. It's quite fizzy, also, so it's thick and fizzy. Um, oh, nice. that's, that's well, like awesome. But it's but it's not bad. Um, anyway, uh, Basilio, Ebrak, and Akram also roll d twenty for me. Uh, j- no, with no no bonuses on that. Just no D20? no bonuses on that. Just d twenty. All right, I got a eighteen seven. for me. Eighteen. Okay. Basilio wow. got a seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ebrak and Akram, uh, you have an unnamed buff. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> you don't know what it does, but you might later. Do okay. they do they exhibit any symptoms? Do they do they like perk up after they drink it or whatever? So Akram and Ebrak, uh, as uh, bilge water in or bilge rats, they clink the glasses and they sling them back with like just just frankly disgusting professionalism that shouldn't be associated with a country, but absolutely is. Um, and, and then and they both like put them down. And they're like, oh, that's pretty good. But that's really it. They don't seem they don't seem like 
physically changed. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll I'll take a little sip of wine then. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> guy. Anyway, yes, the the bookcase full of uh, vials and or mysterious. Goo. I will go check out the bookcase. I assume the gang is coming like... as well. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just hang behind. out at the bar. I don't know, whatever. All right. Uh, so there's a long set of long set of different co- colored vials and glasses on a shelf. Um, y'all know what's your? Give me your passive perception. I'm not gonna take anybody else's. Um, uh, my passive perception is only a thirteen. Okay, so you you can tell um that basically there is a row of bookcases which have been used to sort of like store these vials. And the one in the middle, the one that the barkeep, Phineas, <laughs> as is his name, uh, as he as he denoted, that one actually is slightly smaller than the rest of them. It doesn't actually fit into the row. Okay. That's all uh, you With the 13, that's all you get. Uh, I'm going to investigate this. I'm going to investigate the bookcase, see if there's any like levers, contraptions that could potentially move it out of the way. All right. Uh, would anyone like to assist him on this? Sure. Yeah, I'll help him out. Yeah. Basilio said sure no. first. Uh, yeah. Basilio and Yarno roll d20s. I was really hoping it was somebody with higher intelligence that said sure first. But, <laughs> but, uh, just, just again, no, no bonuses for that. It's an investigation. So if you have investigation. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I got a fourteen. Yes. <laughs> Good shit, dude. I got a fifteen. It's not great, but All right. with a fifteen, uh, you can tell. So you you guys look over the shelves. Um, so you notice that each of the shelves, except for the very center shelf, all of the vials and glasses are the same shape, but the center shelf appears to have no real pattern to it at all. There's various different colors, various different shapes, and none of them seem to match in any way. Some of them are covered, some of them aren't. Can we arrange them to be like the other shelves? I'm gonna say you can move. You can move, start moving vials if you'd like. Okay, I mean that's that that makes the most sense to me. I mean, I I relay this to everybody. I'm like, uh, does anybody think this is like a pattern puzzle? Can we do this. I mean, I, I like look back over to the bartender. Like, does <laughs> anybody think it's a pattern puzzle? Do, should we put them in in the same <laughs> patterns and like see if he reacts at all? He said things. <laughs> I'm just gonna start re- re- moving the potions and like rearranging them. Okay, in hey players. guys, this was an incredibly simple puzzle. I don't know, how, it's not even a puzzle. It was, it's not even a puzzle. Um, Yarno, Yarno pulls the very center vial. Yeah, and it's not a vial. It's a fucking, it's a prop basically. <laughs> and God. you, and you pull it, and it slides, and the whole thing clicks, and the whole <sighs> bookcase starts raises up, really like a passage. <laughs> Great. Okay. We I, did I, it. I, I, and I don't know if it's like a tunnel, but I'm heading down this pathway, I assume. Yeah, we're, we're I imagine coming. all of us are, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay, so uh, you guys uh, walk down a pathway into um, what is a the most illegal room you've ever seen? Um, <laughs> most but, illegal room. So it's dimly lit How with some... How many uh, kilograms of drugs are there? <laughs> eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a lot. This room is pretty fucking illegal, boys. Uh, <laughs> eight kilograms. Take them to jail. How many, How many OSHA violations? <laughs> um so the room is uh dimly lit with hex tech uh might sneeze no i don't uh with hex tech hex tech lamps that are sort of lining the hallway they emit a blue sort of like radiating pulsating light that is never constant so it's kind of like annoying to see in here um and basically there's various crates and barrels floated being loaded with let's just say suspicious looking items you guys enter this room and you see a couple of uh chem punks uh, just of no discreet gang, like there's no indication of like what group they're from in Zona, who are like, you know, sort of like rif- rifling through these boxes. There's a, a larger one who's like moving stuff around. There's a, a wump who is sitting on top of a barrel, and, like scrounging through it. And there's, you know, there's just there's doing stuff. I mean, are they like <laughs> like moving stuff? Like, are they like going through the, the boxes and stuff? They're they're they're, cl- they're clearly working. All right, let's okay. just ignore them and keep walking. Act like I mean, we'd be. Act like we'd yeah. Be I'm gonna act like. So behind the large guy who's moving the boxes, you see the hex uh, hexdralic conveyor. These are basically uh, round or octagonal shaped prism pod devices that are just an elevator, and you can see sort of the platform to step onto it, and then the sort of track that takes it up or down. Mm. And it's just <clears throat> it's just sitting there, and uh, sort of as you guys step forward, uh, one of the uh, chem punks sort of looks up, and he goes, "Eh, hey, what do we got here?" Uh. Your associates at the bar let us back here. Uh, we are gonna use that uh, what's it? Hexavator. A, a hex hexavator. Thank you. Literally, literally, it was everything I could do to not say elevator. Elevator. 
Hexpayer. <laughs> yeah, Phineas let you back here. Hi. Uh, he sort of like goes back, and then the other, uh, uh, sorry, the the wump like scurries up and like climbs up onto his shoulder and goes, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, the 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 Hexpayer ain't exactly it, 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 it ain't free. Uh, we yeah. already paid for it with Phineas. We're we're covered on all no, no, accounts. No, 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 no. You, you, pay, you, pay, you paid to get back here. You didn't pay to use the, the, the hex fair. It's 250 coins. <laughs> Basilio says, oh, God that's... damn it. I, I think I'm going to end up hating this fucking city too, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look. Do the stuff they're moving around, does it look particularly explosive? Oh, no. Um, I, I, I'm going to say Yarno would recognize this. So a lot of this stuff is stuff that is contraband in upper piltover uh things like basically uh can like uh, camp cam injectors and uh explosives um so stuff that like is very it's all over zon but like you can't just walk around the street with it in piltover but piltover scumbags who are equally as corrupt as zon scumbags would have this kind of junk but this is how they get it up throughout the city basically move move or i got you Oh shit. Jesus! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! <laughs> yes, dude. Let him know. And uh, sort of the big guy moving boxes goes. Oh, I don't know. He might gun us. Um, uh, so <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say Yarno Yarno starts you know talking bullshit and starts trying to like get a like he tries he tries to get a persuasion check going and just no one's having any of it. And then Ebrak sort of steps up and just kind of like you know he's got the he's got the fucking ripped shirt pop and he's like move right fucking got you. Ebrak, give me an intimidation check. I rolled a 13, which intimidation didn't go off my charisma. Uh, so, I think, don't you get to use strength for your intimidation? No, I, I wish I could, I wish I could, but this game's shit. That is shit, dude. <laughs> the DM notes this for later. Uh, His pecs are <laughs> bulging and they don't even care. Uh, 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 all right, all right. Before, before something else happens here, Basilio starts walking towards the guy and says, listen, listen, listen. We don't need to get off on the wrong foot here. Like, uh, I literally just tried to gut them. I don't really know. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Basilio, 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 I think we're already on the wrong Basilio point. puts his hands on Ebrak's shoulders like, listen, I'm really sorry. We've had a long day, as I'm sure you guys have. It's like, actually, what's up with that That cool, the, the, the pipes in your head? What? Who, who does your hair, oh man? God. And and as he's saying this, uh, Basilio <laughs> pulls out his uh, Bilgewater Cutlass and first strikes this fucker. What? Oh my gosh! These guys okay, are the worst. No way. Okay. Uh, f- uh, fuck it. Uh, roll initiative, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, we were gonna fight them. Uh, we might not have the, 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 the no, 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 no